You really need to talk to the folks here at Next Level. I've got to tell you, just speaking to the people here, they are fired up, they get it, they've got the right balance, and they're all increasing their income, they're increasing their production. But you're dealing with uh, people that are in the trenches dealing with this, our practitioners, had failures, had successes, learned from it, and it's about helping you, not just like get through the next month, but it's about creating legacy business for yourself. But I can tell you that uh, you are mission focused, I know you're purpose focused, and, and I can tell you that every loan officer that I've communicated with uh, that's been part of your platform has been a raving fan. This is the Next Level Loan Officers Podcast, a proud founding member of the Real Disrupt Podcast Collaborative. You can check out more awesome podcasts at realdisrupt.com. And now, Kenneth Travis and Sean Zalmanoff. Hello, hello, everyone. Sean Zalmanoff here with the latest edition of our Next Level Loan Officers Podcast. And I am joined by my man, my partner, Shane Kidwell. Shane, what's up, brother? What's up, man? It's the Shane and Sean show today, which is always a good episode. You know, which is really fun because if Kenneth was on, it'd be like Shay Sean anyway. And, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, you'd get the names confused. So uh, we've only known Kenneth forever. Plus, um, we like to have adult conversations. And so it's always good to have an adult podcast every so often, right? Every so often. So, hey, like, it is getting busy out there, folks. Like, th this is the season where, like, we we start to grind and man, it, it's that season hasn't stopped for like a year and how many months now, because like things just get busy. And, and one of the things that we focus on a lot in next level, and we've been kind of gotten away from it just a little bit because the, the grind's been so much, it's been so much about recruiting and hiring and getting people trained and all of the struggles that we have. And, you know, but, there's more pillars to our life besides business. You know, you have the relationships that you enter, you have, you know, your mind health or, or, or your relationship with God, depending on, on how that works, meditation, all of that works together. And then you've got also your, your physical nature as well, too. But we want to take a step and really focus on your mindset today, because I will tell you, I have seen people who if you met them and talked to them, like you would think that a strong wind would blow them over until you get to know them, until you know what they've been through, until you know how they program themselves in their mind. You're like, dude, that guy can run through a brick wall. Wow. How my perception was off. And then, you know, I mean, you, the, the stereotypical, I mean, you, you've seen the the, the jock who, I mean, is like a snowflake and, and not in the political sense. I'm not going there, but like, you know, you touch somebody, they melt. And, and so, you know, how do you get to that stage? And, and, you know, it's, you probably got two pretty guys, two pretty good guys on the call uh, to talk to you about that today, because like, I mean, there's a lot of things where how Shane and I grew up and where we are now that would stack up to be like, man, you know, those guys probably shouldn't be where they're at right now. So Shane, man, like, dude, you lost your father when you were young. You, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a secret. You've battled depression. Uh, I've, no, I have. I've just never like been diagnosed, man. I've well, been, when, a lot. when your baseball team is the Seattle Mariners, everyone in the state of Washington has depression, Sean. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, but in all seriousness, you know, you bring up a lot of really good points and, and, and not to cut you off, but I, yeah, my dad died when I was seven and pretty unexpected. I mean, he had cancer, but he went to the hospital one day and just never came home. And that's a pretty traumatic experience for a seven-year-old. Uh, you know, then battling depression as an adult because of that, that was undiagnosed. Uh, I was a fireman for 12 years. And so that causes a lot of mental challenges, just going through the rigors of being a full-time fireman in a, a really busy city. And then I became a, a mortgage professional and a fireman at the same time and, and battled just working 80 hours a week, the grind that a lot of us have gone through and never feeling good enough, always comparing to the competition, what they showed me they were, um, you know, building a lot of white picket fences in my mind for other people and then having, you know, just a really, really weak mindset. And for me, it all turned when I made a conscious decision to be different. And that sounds super cheesy, but 
one day, you know, I was sitting there and I'm like, I, I've been talking about losing weight for a while because I had a bad back. Um, I, I lifted a lot of people in my day as a fireman, had a really bad back. So I was less active than I wanted to be. And I, I kept getting on planes and traveling and feeling uncomfortable. I'd, I'd go places and feel uncomfortable. And I keep telling myself, I just need to lose, lose a few pounds, man. I'm tired. I don't feel good about myself. I need to lose a few pounds. Then one day my coach's voice got in my ear and he said, you know, the things that you do are the things that you want. And if you really wanted it, you would really do it. Like if you really wanted to lose weight, you would do it. You like eating. You like being comfortable. You like having a cocktail at night more than you like losing weight. Because if you like losing weight, you would lose weight. And I was like, and I, I told myself that after getting coached and, and I repeated what my coach said. I said, I need to do something about it. And I said, I clearly don't want this or I would have done it. Right. And, and so that's a, that's a really key element for people who aren't where they want to be. And it's easy to right now put a white picket fence around 2020 and say, I did everything I wanted. My volume was tremendous. My unit count was great. I made more money than I ever made. I posted my new car online and talked about how thankful I was to have this, you know, this opportunity when you're really just looking for affirmation. It's easy to say 2020 was a banner year, but did you get what you wanted? Like, are you healthy? Do you have a great relationship with your spouse, your kids? And I'm going through a pretty unique experience right now. I'm an older, soon to be first time dad. I'm 38. I've never had kids of my own. And uh, now as a 38 year old with a lot of responsibility professionally, I'm now stepping into being a dad. And so this is a really good opportunity and a reminder to you all. So if you're on this call and you're a parent, you know what it was like the week before your child was born. You remember how motivated you were to make an amazing life for your kids. You remember how focused you were on doing the right thing, on being home on time, on taking the weekends for your kids, about never missing their sporting events because maybe your parents missed your sporting events. Maybe you didn't have two parents around. Like, so you had laser focus on what you were going to do different to make your family's life better. Then you have your baby and you're holding that baby for the first time, which I will be doing soon. And it's just like, everyone says to me, Shane, there's nothing like it. I'm so excited for Shane to have a kid. There's nothing like it. And you go through that experience and there's nothing like it. And then you go, I will be the best dad, best mom in the world holding this baby. I will never let this baby down. And then what happens? Life gets in the way. And now your baby's five and you go, man, I was supposed to take him to daycare every Friday. I made that commitment when I was holding that little peanut in my hand. I made that commitment. And then they're 10. Ah, you know, I was going to take them to school every Monday. I was going to have lunch with them every Wednesday. I was going to do these things. I wasn't going to come home grumpy and bring my work home with me. I wasn't going to work on the weekends. And again, what you're really saying, if we're just being brutally honest here, is you have a weak mindset. You care more about answering that agent's call at seven o'clock at night than you care about your kids. Prove me wrong. So don't take the call. I was just having a conversation with, with one of my LOs and uh, she's been a boss for a long time, but a slave, an absolute slave to the job. And uh, she's got a couple of great loan partners working with her right now, a marketing person who, who's killing it for her. And we should actually have her on for a podcast. Uh, and she called me and she's like, it's like four o'clock. I'm at my kids swim lessons at four o'clock yesterday, by the way, because I make a conscious decision to do those things. And she was like, man, everything's going so well. I feel guilty. I know for years I was like, I got to be first in. I got to be last. And that's all. Yes. You don't have to do those things. I, I want you guys to stop what you're doing right now. And I want you to write down this sentence. It's a little bit long. So I'm going to give you Three uncomfortable seconds of silence. Okay, now you got your pen and paper out. So write this down. The story that you tell yourself the most is the story that you believe the most. And the story that you believe the most is the story that you tell yourself the most. So, so like Shane, I'm just a couple years older. I had my first child when, when I was 36, though. And I, and like, I didn't have any money growing up. We were really poor living in a middle class area and so the, the the money thing was very real and in my face and so i had this thing i i always like i need to make money need to make money need to make money it was like it was my driving force and then shortly before i had my kid i love camping i love the outdoors and i was realizing that 
I mean, I got robbed of a lot of time with my dad when, when I was young and um, he's still alive, but because of some decisions that were made, I, that, that happened for me. And uh, I, I realized that, man, I would have been, I'll be happier. My ch child would be happier when he turns 10 years old. If I was a park ranger and spent a whole bunch of time with him, then say, hey guys, we got money and I did this for you. And it's like, well, I didn't want the money, dad. I wanted you. And, and so these are the decisions that, that we have to make in our life. And really life is about making decisions. There's a, um, a lot of you guys know the author, Andy Andrews. And in, in one of the books, he has the, the noticer. It's, there, there's an analogy inside of it. And so there's five birds sitting on a fence. One decides to leave. How many birds are still sitting on the fence? Simple math, right? Five on the fence, one decides to leave. How many are still sitting on the fence? There's still five sitting on the fence because we make decisions all the time, but we don't act. And so things happen in a split second when you act. When Shane decided, I'm going to stop talking about, I'm going to stop deciding on getting healthy. I'm going to lose this weight. So, you know, my tall ass isn't all cramped in, hurting even more on a plane. And these are the things that, that we talk about. These are the things that we do. These are the stories that I, I tell myself on a daily basis in order to be powerful and strong, lead my organization, lead my family. And, and you know, Shane, you're talking about comparing yourself to others. My, my boys are seven and five right now. And I mean, I tell them <clears throat> every day, one of them's like, well, he got this or he got three extra minutes on the iPad. And I'm like, hey, man, dude, the only person you need to compare yourself to is you. Don't worry about what ha happened with him. Well, John, I love what you said. And the story that you believe is the story you tell. The story you tell is the story be you believe. The story you believe is the story you become. And so what you tell, what you believe, you will become. And if you're not becoming who you want to become in business and in life, the beauty of our lives is you can you can change that we've all seen stories of people who like have battled injuries and have overcome way more than we ever ever will so let's take this back for the last just couple minutes of this to business specifically so if the story you believe is the story you tell the story is i've got to work nights and weekends that's a story that you tell yourself and you believe it and then it becomes you and then you do that right uh, you could also say my team will support my real estate agents to the point where we work five days a week, have a weekend on-call staff that works specific hours, and my agents and referral partners value us. They know we value them, and we create balance. What if that was your story? What if the story was that you know, you're not as important as you think you are? In fact, what if the story became that you're the least important person in, on your team? in your system. And if you're the least important person and you're a 10 and you're a boss, then that means everyone on your team is an 11. And if they're 11s and you don't work weekends and you've hired people, you've built on call, you built systems to do that, is your life better? And then if you don't live in scarcity and you understand that badass mofos who work really hard within their zone of excellence always win, if you live that life, that becomes your story and you know you will make more money, you turn down bad business. You say no to bad relationships, right? You only go after people who exude exactly what you want to be around. If you do that, where are you at the end of this year? Do refis going up or down in rate really matter? Does inventory being low really affect you? There is enough business in my market that if all the other lenders quit, I would quadruple my business and not even try. If 10% if of the LOs in my market quit, I could double my business. Don't you think that with rates going up and the majority of our mortgage population being weak-minded people, strong-minded people will actually do better in a quote-unquote down market? The reality is my best years when I started were coming out of the biggest recession we had had since the Great Depression. And I got in the business in 2009 when everyone was saying, what are you doing? You're an absolute moron. I said, half my competition, just quit, right? So without knowing it, I created a story that I became that was my competition quit, I'm ready to roll. And then life got me down, things got in the way, and I lost my mojo. So like my challenge to you all 
is speak the story that you want to become and what you become will be an incredible story. So Shane, you're talking about scarcity and the, the other side of that's abundance. There's a whole another level past that called prosperity, but, but let's just deal with scarcity and abundance right now. So you're like, if you make yourself not important on your team, like if you are a 10, like what happens to most people is they want somebody almost as good as them. So the higher nines, the higher eights can't do put somebody better in this position because they'll take my job. They'll take my clients. They'll take my realtors. And the thing is, like, if you work with 11s and 12s and you tell yourself, I don't hire anybody less than 11 and 12, I don't tolerate that inside of my organization, inside of my team, inside of what I am running in front of me, then it's easy for you to be awesome. And it's easy for you to lead people because you put people who do the jobs that you're hiring them for those specific sections, they're better than you. And then all of a sudden, and when you show up at nine, cause you're dropping your kids off and you leave at three because you got to go to swim lessons and you don't have to go to swim lessons. You choose to, to, to go to swim lessons because you want to pick your kid up from school and you're going by Starbucks to get yourself a cold brew and some banana bread for your boy. And like, you know, you got these things that, that you like to do. There's not a soul in your office who cares because what you created and what you provided and the role you set them in, you set it up for success. And just, you just got to tell yourself that story. So guys, if, if this resonates with you, there are incredible opportunities to meet us on the other side. And really what we have created with Next Level is a fraternity, a sorority of like-minded, powerful people. We live in abundance. We don't live in scarcity. We live in intentions, not I will, I, I, I might do, but we will do. We intend to do things and then we do them. We don't say we're going to get off the fence and then sit on the fence. We implement before things are necessarily market ready so we can be first to market. We ready, fire, aim sometimes, and we're unabashedly proud of that. If that's you, if you like to surround yourself with like-minded people, we would invite you to meet us on the other side. Sean, what are a couple of ways that people can have an opportunity to meet us on the other side? I mean, gosh, what? Well what way isn't there? You can go to support at nextlevello.com. You can email us. You can go check out nextlevello.com uh, to see where uh, what events we're having. I mean, we have uh, a digital program that you can see our entire live event uh, right from your computer, which it's amazing, but like there's something about coming and seeing us live too. Uh, you name it. We probably have the medium for you to reach out to us, but just go find out. Go ask the loan officers who know us already and uh, see for yourself. No matter what, the thing that I do know for a fact is that when you do find your one plus one equals three, you will be better and you will thank yourself for it. I do think we're the best, but if that doesn't work for you, then find what is the best for you. And do that. I, I will tell you one thing. The thing that separates Next Level from every other coaching program out there is that, guys, we're in the trenches with you every day. Like, we we are doing the work, experimenting, having all these things happen, and we're not teaching you the same crap that's been around for decades. And, and that's just what you get. If that works for you, then you need to come check us out. Well, guys, uh, we're, we're blessed to be able to have this platform to share with you our what's worked for us and what hasn't. Uh, for the life of one additional loan a year, you can join us on the other side. And yes, I said that correctly. One additional closed loan a year, uh, you can meet us on the other side. Uh, if we don't see you on the other side, I still encourage you to take the opportunity to write a new story, to be a more powerful version of yourself. Our world needs that more than now, more than ever. And our industry needs powerful people to take this business to the next level in, in the next stage of our journey. Uh, we, we look forward to seeing you on the next episode and we look forward to seeing you on the other side. We appreciate y'all. Thanks guys.